So at first, I would like to thank the IAPTA TE organizing committee for giving me a chance to speak on this topic. Do we need HTE? Before that, let us know what is HTE. So the HTE system consists of a TE probe and a monitor. This TE probe is a miniaturized one, st provided sterile, disposable, single use, and uh, it has a tip diameter of around 5.5 millimeters. Our conventional TE probe has a diameter of around 14 to 16 millimeters, depending on the type. And uh, the system uses a monoplane piezoelectric design with an operating frequency of around uh, six to seven megahertz. And uh, the depth, uh, and it provides a depth of up to 18 centimeters. The probe can be detached at this junction from the handle, and it can be left indwelling into the patient for the 72 hours once activated. And uh, it has the same contraindications as our routine conventional TE. Now the handle has a lever and an image acquisition button. Now when the lever is moved down, there occurs retroflexion in a similar manner. Is moved upwards, there occurs anti flexion. The next component of the system is the EVO1 monitor. It is compact with LCD display and touch screen ability. It offers distance and area measurements and color, color flow Doppler mapping also. There is split screen imaging ability provided so that one can compare the loops. And the uh, sector of the field is around 70 to 90 degrees. And the screen can be moved to the right or left electronically with the help of these blue arrows. Now the HD examination consists of acquiring only three views, that is the mid esophageal four chamber, the transgastric mid papillary short axis, and the superior vena cava view. So it is said that as the as as one requires to take less number of views, the examination time is short, and even the training required is less. So coming to the first view, that is the mid esophageal four chamber tube, the probe is inserted through the mouth and is positioned just below the aortic valve and then retroflexed a little bit so as to obtain the four chamber view. So one can evaluate the biventricular size and function, any regional wall motion abnormalities, the interatrial position can give an idea about the atrial pressures. Uh, one needs to maintain a neutral IVS position in cases of LVAD. One can detect pericardial fluid and with color doctor, you can see TR and MR qualitatively, but you cannot quantify it. The next view is the transgastric short axis view where the probe is positioned past the gastroesophageal junction and anti-flexed to image at the mid papillary level. One can evaluate LV contractility of all the segments, of all the six segments of the LV. Serial measurements of uh, LVDA can give an idea about the preload and the fluid responsiveness, and also pericardial effusion can be detected. The last view is the SVC view. Here, uh, the probe is positioned just above the aortic valve at the level of ascending aorta and turned a little bit to the right so as to bring SVC in the center. This view is not in our SV, uh, AAC comprehensive uh, guidelines, but has gained a lot of significance in critical care echocardiography, and it is used to evaluate the SVC size and collapsibility with the uh, respiration. So if you see in this image, the maximum diameter of the SVC is mapped and uh, the value is put. And uh, in the next image, the minimum diameter is mapped. And once the values are put, the machine automatically calculates the collapsibility index. So why do we need echocardiography when we have so many other monitoring ability, monitoring technologies for advanced hemodynamic assessment? Uh, but, uh, but each of these uh, modalities come with their own disadvantages. In the setting of the ICU, it is said that the pulmonary artery catheter is said to be one of the most invasive, uh, uh, most invasive monitoring uh, uh, monitoring ability, given its ability to induce arrhythmias and perforation, and at the same time, inability to interpret numbers in uh, novice hands, the APCO and PICO require the patient to be fully relaxed on mechanical ventilation with uh, sinus rhythm, which is not possible at all times in post-op patients. And uh, stroke volume variation in the presence of um, RV dysfunction or pericardial fluid is of not much value. And besides this, all these monitors are not useful when uh, mechanical circulatory support in the form of IABP or uh, ECMO or LVADs are used, and we know that its use is now increasing. 
On the other hand, echocardiography, be it a transesophageal or transthoracic, provides a direct visualization of the myocardial contractility as well as filling pressures and can be very useful in the setting of acute hemodynamic instability. So coming to the post-operative period, we know that doing a transthoracic echocardiography is very difficult given the drains and the bandages and the mechanical ventilation. And uh, tea is very useful in the post-operative period, but it is often inaccessible in, at odd hours, requires a board certified echocardiographer to acquire the images uh, and uh, interpret them. It is not meant to be kept in dwelling for a long period of time. And if uh, by chance, if it's, one forgets to unfreeze it, there are chances of thermal injury. So probably it is here that the hemodynamic T can find its place where a continuous or an episodic monitoring of the heart by its direct visualization along with ability to measure filling pressures can detect any cause of hemodynamic instability, guide therapy and monitor the effect of any intervention. So now let us see what how T can be useful in various uh, hemodynamic instabil in, in sta instability states. So coming to the first hypovolemia, there will be a lot of SVC variation with respiration. The LV and the RV sizes may be small with normal contractility. In isolated LV dysfunction, uh, SVC variation may or may not be there. The LV is, looks dilated and there will be reduced contractility. The RV may be normal or dilated depending upon the involvement of the RV. At what stage is the RV involvement present? And in isolated RV dysfunction, the SVC will be very tense, dilated. There will be no respiratory variations. The LV may be normal or hyperdynamic. The RV may be dilated in comparison to the LV with a classical D-shaped septum found in transgastric short axis view. And coming to the last cardiac tamponade, again, the SVC variation with respiration will be absent. And uh, there will be major pericardial effusion, which will be compressing the right-sided chambers. So now what does the literature say? So this was on among the first pilot studies in a mixed ICU where they studied 94 ventilated critically ill patients and they did 263 assessments. They found no failure of probe insertion and the image quality was uh, adequate or optimal in 91% of the cases where the duration of monitoring was around 32 hours. What they found was that in 50% uh, of the patients, in 50% of the assessments, had a direct therapeutic impact in 62, in 62 patients, that is in the form of fluid administration or vasoactive drug initiation or tapering of inotropes. And uh, coming to the complications, they found that only two cases of lip ulceration and two patients had uh, self-limiting gastric bleeding. So this recent article in uh, JCVA published in 2019 had summarized almost all the studies involving the HTE. Here, the, in all these studies, the definition, the definition of hemodynamic instability was based on the routine hemodynamic parameters of MAP, CVP, PAP, uh, signs, and signs of uh, tissue hypoperfusion. And in the first study, that is by Maltias et al., where they studied 21 cardiac, unstable cardiac patients, 14 among them, that is 66% of the cases, showed a discordance between the standard ICU hemodynamic monitoring and uh, qualitatively assessed uh, miniature TE examinations with right ventricular dysfunction, tamponade, and hypovolemia in spite of high filling pressures were the main causes of uh, hemodynamic instability. In a similar study by Fletcher et al., where they studied 41 patients with severe cardiogenic shock, 90% of the patients had changes in their therapies uh, in the form of fluid administration, vasoactive drugs, titration, which resulted in better hemodynamics and um, right ventricular failure again was diagnosed in 76% of the cases. Similar findings were noted by Tresca et al, where 89% of the patients had change in their current therapy based on the findings of the miniature TE examination. And in this study, in fact, the studies were performed by ICU residents who had minimal experience in TE uh, with six hours of clarity training under the supervision of a board certified echocardiographer. Now coming to the hemodynamic T and the mechanical circulatory support, Kavarashi et al. Uh, developed a standardized weaning protocol from VA ECMO, which was guided by HTE, where they did a baseline study 
and uh, any weaning intervention weaning intervention in the form of flow reduction or volume administration or uh, inotrope initiation were qualitatively assessed by HTE over time and, and they found that 100% positive predictive value for ventricular recovery versus non-recovery. In a retrospective uh, review by Haglund et al, 72% uh, of the studies showed uh, uh, changed management in the post-operative period in the patients undergone LVAD with the RV dysfunction and hypovolemia being the major majority of the causes. In a study by Lang et al, where they studied 53 hemodynamically unstable patients, they found that 77% of the examinations provided useful information to the management. What they meant by useful information was that is the data which was available, that is the information which was available beyond the data from the conventional hemodynamic assessment. Now coming to the limitations, uh, the limitations I would say is more from the Indian scenario point of view with cost being the major, the most limiting factor. Each TE probe cost around $1,000 to one lakh in our country with the resultant lack of data from Indian population. We have still not used TE, this HT probe in any of our hospitals in this city and only a couple of centers in North and South have used it. Uh, critical care echocardiography is still uh, in its uh, initial stages in India where the intensivists are more inclined towards learning uh, the transthoracic echocardiography. I happened to ask few of my senior intensivist colleagues who were non-cardiac and they were not aware of this uh, technology. Now, there are case studies where uh, they have shown that usage of HTE has prevented re-explorations, but their cost-benefit analysis was not done. These studies focused more on the clinical decision-making rather than cost comparisons. And in all the aforementioned studies, patient outcomes were not uh, studied. Now, because of the very flexible tip and, um, and, um, and the less surface air contact area, the image quality is a little bit inferior compared to the standard TE. Also, it will be difficult to visualize um, prosthetic valves or devices with high echogenicity because uh, being monoplane, it cannot be viewed in other, uh, in other planes. <laughs> And there is no spectral Doppler interrogation, volumetric and quantitative assessment, but this system was not designed for that. And there are no established guidelines and consensus. Each institution had different uh, training uh, protocols lasting from hours to weeks to months. Now coming to the future of this very promising technology lies in overcoming a few of its complications, few of its limitations. One needs prospective studies in large sample sizes uh, uh, to prove its utility against the conventional TTE and TE before incorporating it into the routine, uh, before incorporating it as a routine hemodynamic uh, assessment tool. Uh, we have seen from all these studies that um, that, that HTE did uh, detect physiological derangements and guided therapy, but the impact of these therapeutic changes was uh, on the uh, was not. Uh, uh, but the impact of these therapeutic changes done on the patient outcomes needs to be studied. At least there should be incorporation of multiple technology so as to fine tune the hemodynamic assessment. Now, cardiac uh, post-op cardiac patients are very complex and doing echocardiography of this group of patients requires a lot of experience, which cannot be learned in just a couple of hours to months to hour, weeks of training. So there should be a proper training protocol with defined periods of time, number of studies required to do, to, to attain proficiency in this, um, in, in this system. And uh, all the aforementioned studies involving the HT showed no major complications, but, uh, the but the rate of complications with the conventional TE probe is also very low. So a large cohort of patients will be required to establish its uh, safety profile. So with this, I would like to end my presentation. And uh, during the Q&A session, I would like to uh, invite inputs and views from all the senior uh, faculty members and probably Dr. Scott may throw more light upon this subject of HTE system. Thank you very much.